Well, it's important for me to be here for many reasons. I'm here to really commemorate the 30th anniversary of the LA riots and really showing support for the Korean American community. I'm from Washington State, but I'm down here in LA this weekend. And it was amazing today just to meet the members of the board because it just shows that we are so smart and so capable and we show up in many different places. There were attorneys, there were people who are nonprofit, run nonprofits, there are people who are content creators online. I met someone who's a brewer today. And so what's exciting here is that the Korean American community is showing up in places where people don't expect to see us. What happened 30 years ago played a pivotal role, not just for Korean Americans here in LA, but all over the country. I was growing up as a young boy in New Jersey when I watched what was happening unfolding on TV and it shaped me, it shaped my family. And now I want to make sure that I can show solidarity, that I can be here with the Korean American community and, and show to them that it matters, that their voice matters, and that our efforts in Congress are trying to show that we're gonna have a seat at the table and a voice in the room now. Thirty years ago, we watched in real time the brutality of the police department, you know, hurting a black man. The verdict that came out obviously is really what was the catalyst for the riots. And so I think the question I ask myself is like, what has changed, right? Are we investing in underserved neighborhoods? Is policing more just today? Do people feel as though they have economic opportunity and a fair shot at what this American dream is supposed to be? And so yes, there's been progress made, but I think the biggest thing that I've seen happen in the last you know, year or so is that during the Black Lives Matter movement, you saw Korean Americans standing up for black lives. During the Stop Asian Hate movement, you saw African Americans standing and speaking out against Asian hate. So my hope and dream is that as we move forward, we think about how stronger we are together. There's so much that we share so much we have in common and I know this firsthand because I myself am black and Korean I belong to both communities but at the end of the day our experience is the American story It is incredibly important for the Korean American community to pay attention to politics, to be engaged in politics, and for us to think about who will be the next generation of leaders. And what's really cool about the story is that you have people with different backgrounds. I come from a business background. I was a mayor of the city. I ran a chamber of commerce, and now I'm here in the halls of Congress with my colleague Andy Kim. And so I think the conversation here is about what is a succession plan? When there's an open seat in local government, do we put Korean Americans up there who are going to support and get them elected? It it is important for Korean Americans to be involved in politics and the public process because we have to have a voice. I would say for so long as Asian Americans were overlooked, were invisible, were erased and were ignored and now is a time for us to speak up. When we think about what comes next, we have to think about it in terms of impact. What impact do we want to see happen? I know many people here feel the same way across the Korean American community, and that's why it's important that we think about what is the impact that we want. We recognize, and I think 30 years ago taught us, that we cannot just live in our own isolated bubble, that what happens around us, our relationship to other communities matters. And it's not just about the challenges that we face, we have to be looking out and helping those other communities too about the challenges that they're facing. Politics is not just this collision between two political parties. It is how we think about shaping our future. We have to get engaged. And that's what I'm seeing here. Incredible engagement from uh, multiple different generations of, of many different people uh, that all recognize that we have to have that seat at the table and that voice in the room. Democracy is about engagement and it's our turn to make sure that we are stepping up and engaging in that democracy. Otherwise, someone else is gonna make the choices for us, you know, and that we have to recognize that we want to be our own agent of change.
But um, look, I, I was uh, I was a young boy, 30 years ago. Um, I was about I was nine years old, and you know this was I, I growing up in in New Jersey, and I remember vividly seeing the images on TV. You know, my family glued to the TV. We weren't getting it through the TV. We we were certainly seeing the images of of the riot, but we, we weren't hearing that story being told until we were hearing it from our friends, from family, from from others. But that was an event that really shook their shook their core, and and, and something that was you know deeply profound. Even though we we're on the other side of the country, which is why I wanted to be here with you today and show my solidarity. By the time the trial ended and the verdict came in, I was back home and I was working at Starbucks in Seattle. When Starbucks was this young upstart company that was wondering if they could be successful in Chicago. But that tells you how long ago it was. So I kind of had two experiences, right? The black experience being in Atlanta, one of the black meccas in America, watching the cops do this to this man, and then a year later, the verdict, and then the ensuing violence that took place in Los Angeles. And so, you know, to your point, I live in both worlds, and I was horrified at everything I saw. The feelings were like, oh, here we go again. The feelings were, why are we doing this to each other when we have so much in common? But it also showed that there are communities that we're not being invested in. What happened in LA with the rioting wasn't necessarily just about what happened with the verdict. It was about lack of investment, about people feeling hopeless, about people not feeling as though they belonged. And it makes us forget about what we have in common. And I think that when we look at systems that exist in this country, whether it's financial, social, or political, those systems are still present today. So I think the question for me is, how are we going to band together as communities of color to point out what we have together, what makes us stronger and really amplifies our voice so that we can make sure that we get access to all the things that we need.